Hello viewers. I started this project out of a standard Amarok CC01 kit that I first built according to the plans as an off-road vehicle. Inspired by videos I saw on YouTube, I decided to convert my kit to a low rider. I wanted to keep the whole process low budget so I ordered the servos I needed and the other hardware from China. Minimal tools are needed, a drill, a Dremel tool, and a saw should be enough to follow my method of assembly. get started, disassemble the rear axle, the rear end links, the shocks, and the wheels. Note that you should get the upgrade rear end links as you will need the standard plastic links for the assembly of the front servos, as you will see later. Mark out the square holes on the wheel boxes and cut them out with the Dremel tool. Uh, choose the size that I have chosen here just about with my felt pen. This is what your final result should look like. We need these holes to have room for the turnbuckles to push the wheels up and down. In the back I cut out the bottom of the chassis but later found out that I might not have had to do that. Uh, I figured I'd be able to fit the servos easier if I do. I used standard sized servos and measured the base of the servo and marked a rectangular marking on the inside of the wheel box. The rear edge of the servo was placed exactly under the middle hole of the three holes you see in the wheel box. Now we'll be working on the front again. Use one of the standard plastic rear end links that are in the kit and lengthen them to size to form a brace for these front servos. You'll see what I mean when you see the next pictures. Before you can install the front servos, you'll have to enlarge the two holes in the chassis that you see at the very bottom of this picture. Make them the size of the bolt that you are planning to use to uh, fix the brace for the servos, as you will see in one of the next pictures. This is a first look at the complete assembly of the front servos. Note that I had to drill the holes in the chassis to fit the bolts and I made a top brace out of the plastic rear end link that is part of the kit. Here you can see the fully mounted servos. Note that you have to really tighten the bolts very tight so that the servos cannot move within the brace. You will have to later lengthen the bolts down to be flush with the nuts so that uh, th the screws won't scrape on the pavement when you go low. I also had to cut out a little bit of plastic out of the front of the chassis so that the servos could go be inserted even lower so that the body of the car will uh, assemble nice and low later on. So my bolts were 70 millimeters long in the end. You should try to go for a similar size when you are finished. Here is a view of the servo assembly in driving direction. You can already see the servo heads 
and also get a hint of how the turnbuckles are assembled. On this picture you can see where the bottom end of the turnbuckle mounts. It mounts right on where the shock absorbers were before. We have no shocks in this low rider car. You can also see the cutaway of the chassis to lower the servos a little bit more so that the chassis will fit nice and low later on the model. A first test on the workbench looked pretty promising. I'll show you pictures later on in detail of the turnbuckle assembly. Next I inserted the back servos. Make sure that the turning axle of the servo is at the rear end of the car. Just screw the mounting screws into the plastic. Here you get a view of the turnbuckle for the back servos. The bottom of the turnbuckle mounts where the shock absorbers were and the top mounts onto the servo arm. The length of the turnbuckle is exactly 55 millimeters. Be sure to order the right length when you order from China. They have several lengths and you must see that you get the right one. This is another view of the turnbuckles from the bottom side. Here is a bottom view of the front turnbuckle. The length is exactly 70 millimeters. The bottom end attaches where the shocks attach and the top end attaches to the servo arm. Make sure that the holes in the chassis are large enough so that the turnbuckle won't catch on the edges. This is a little rear end action of the finish assembly. As you can see, the wheels lift very well. I use a cheap radio. I only have four switches on my transmitter and I hit those switches and make the wheels move. There's nothing more to it. This is another short clip of the front servos in action. You may have noticed that I swapped the standard uh, attachment posts for the body for some magnets. I, this, I did this to lower the body onto the chassis even more to get the correct low rider look. You have to figure out how many magnets you have to stack up and when you found out the right height then you can glue them together with CA glue so that they won't come apart. I glued a magnet for each post to the inside of the body. Make sure you get the polarity right so that the magnets will stick. And so I can remove the body easier, I stuck a layer of tape over the magnets so I can take the body off easier. This is what the magnets under the body look like from the outside. If you want, you can paint them blue, of course. If you did everything right, it can even three-wheel for you. Thank you for your time. I wish you success in copying this conversion. The whole conversion cost me around $50. The servos were about $11 a piece, and the rest was just pennies for the turnbuckles and maybe a screw or two. When you finish this conversion, I'm sure you'll have a model that people will turn their heads for.